Hey there guys, this is Reviews to Go, and I'm ready to do my Nintendo Switch hardware review. So, the Nintendo Switch is a game system that tries to meld and combine tablet gaming, handheld gaming, and console gaming. It's a console f that you can display on your TV. It's a handheld you can take on the go. It's a tablet that you can prop up and play like, like a tablet. So let's start the hardware section by actually looking at the hardware and then showing you how it does this. So we got our, basically three units here. We got our dock, we got our main unit, we got our controllers. So on our dock, we've got two USB ports right here. A slot that you put the main unit in if you want to go into console mode, which I'll show you here in a minute. Then we open up this compartment back here. We've got three cord ports here. USB-C for power. USB for controllers. HDMI out for displaying on the TV or a monitor. Then, we've got our main unit. Primarily a screen. Then, on each side, we've got grooves. That is for those blue and red controllers over there to slide and snap into place for handheld mode. Then on the bottom, we've got a USB-C charging port, so you can charge while you're in handheld mode. On the top, right here we got a power button and two volume buttons. Right here we got our speakers, and over here we've got our cartridge slot and our headphone jack. Finally, on the back, we've got a kickstand for tablet mode, so it can be propped up on a table. Plus, hidden under there is this nice little micro SD slot. Then, we already looked at the controllers in the previous video, so I'll be brief about this. Each controller has four buttons, an analog stick, a minus or a plus button, which are basically the Switch's versions of Start and Select, and another button on the bottom. On the left-hand side, this is a screen capture button. On the right-hand side, it is the home button. Then we got two triggers up here, and for local multiplayer, for using one Joy-Con as a single chip controller. We've got two extra buttons in here, plus a button in the middle to turn the Joy-Con off. So let's see how it actually does this. Let's say we want to do console mode for a while. We want to play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on our nice Samsung monitor. So, we've got our stock hooked up to power and the monitor itself. We slide our unit in here. We start hitting buttons on here to get it to recognize and display the video. And we are good to go. And we can just start diving in, running around in our Ocarina of Time special armor, and we can play Zelda for a while. Now, we, go, we do this for a little while and we decide that we want to use it as a handheld now. We want to take it on a bus ride for a couple hours. So, pause the game, go out to the home menu. And here's where we'll see how well the system changes from console to handheld mode. Pop it out of here. Screen's already taken over. Waiting for me to snap the controllers into place. And once they are in place, you can now use the system as a handheld. Now let's say you're on your bus ride, you find a little buddy that you know. You prop down one of those little tables like you, like you see on airplane seats and you want to play multiplayer in fast RMX. So you need to set it up in tabletop mode or tablet mode. So we just take the controllers off like this. You remember that kickstand I told you about? flip out the kickstand, prop it up, suddenly you're all set for tabletop, tabletop mode or tablet mode. It's really seamless and I love how easily and seamless it is. Much, much easier than swapping from a Vita to a PlayStation TV. Now how does the rest of the hardware perform? Now, as you can see, the, the transition is seamless, so that works really well. 
Then we got the Joy-Con controllers. There are a lot of things I love about the Joy-Con controllers, there's one thing I don't. This sucker right here, the left hand Joy-Con controller. You might have heard a few things about the web, around the web about these things having problems. Here's my problem. The Joy-Cons connect wirelessly unless you're in handheld mode. It's all constantly connecting between the antenna in the Joy-Con to the antenna in this. The only problem, specific with the left one, is if there are any solid objects between the controller and the unit, you're eventually going to start seeing lag and you might have to resync the controller in general. I've had to do this on a daily basis, sometimes two or three times a day, depending on how much I've been using my Switch. It's, I mean, it's probably just a design flaw. It's probably something they can fix in their next run of controllers or in a software update. But it's something that is a pretty big annoyance. Because, I mean, if you're running around in Zelda, you're fighting a big boss fight, and you start getting lag, it's a major problem. Now, the only other thing is how the Joy-Cons can be played. Because you can connect them to a grip to be used as a controller. Now this grip is a little bit, it takes a little getting used to because as you can see it's a lot less wide than say a PlayStation 4 controller. So holding it like this, when I first started using it, it was really awkward. I mean after about an hour I'd gotten used to it, but what I really like to do is to use the Joy-Con's free hand. Put one Joy-Con in your left hand, one Joy-Con in your right hand. Now first, you'd think this would be super awkward, especially with the fact that each Joy-Con has two triggers on it, but it's really not. It really flows well, and sometimes I do, I can react better with the Joy-Con like this than I can when it's in controller mode. It's really surprised me at how well it really works like that. But that is the finale of my hardware portion of the review. I've already burned up about seven minutes, so let's cut the video and we'll go back with a direct feed as we go into the software and the feature portion of the review. All right, now I'm back, so let's take a look at the software portion. First of all, we're going to give you a brief tour of the user interface and making profiles. Now when you first go into the game, you have to make a profile. So I've got my special little reviews to go profile here, and I've got an alternate profile. Princess Zelda has made a profile on my Switch. Now the nice thing about here, before we go into the interface, if I go into my profile, I download Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I play it for a while. Zelda comes in, she logs into her profile. She can play any of my digital content she wants. It'll give her her own save data, and that's something I really thought was neat, especially for those of you who want to switch in a household of family. That way, your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, your neighbors can come over and play, and you won't have to risk them messing up your save data. But, let's take a look at the user interface. Up in the top left corner, we've got our profiles. In the top right corner, we got our time, battery charge, and our Wi-Fi. Then we've got this big section here which is going to take which is going to show the games we have installed so as you can see right here I've got digital copies of Legend of Zelda I am Setsuna and fast RMX installed right now then down here we've got all of our little apps we've got news app to show news from Nintendo this is updated often I've already gotten two or three new updates here since the switch came out last Friday we've got the eShop where we can go and buy game buy digital games and digital content We've got our album where we can look at all of our special screenshots. We've got controllers where we can pair up new controllers or resync controllers if we have that problem I told you earlier about with the left Joy-Con. And we got settings where we can, well, change all the system settings, put it into airplane mode if it's in handheld mode, delete data, set up users, set up a, set up a, or edit a, a me, register amiibos, themes, and then finally we got our sleep mode if you want to power the system down for a while. So that's the basic description, I guess, for that. And now that we have that uh, covered, storage space. Let's see, where are you? Data management. All right, so by default, Nintendo Switch is a 32 gigabyte system. You only get about 25 of those gigabytes to use. And if you want Zelda Digital, 
you're going to say bye-bye to 13 and a half more gigabytes. The good thing is, you see that little micro SD card section. You can put a micro SD card in. So if you want to spend, say, $40 on Amazon, you can get a 128 gigabyte micro SD card pop in the system and you're not going to run out of space for a very, very long time. Now we already covered actual gameplay. There is another thing I want to talk about with, with games before we go into the final section. When you're playing through a game and you want to browse the eShop or use some different app, you can. There are very few things you, that require you to close a game. So if I want to go into the eShop, we can go into the eShop. And Zelda does not close. This is a really great multitasking feature they put in. Because if you remember, the 3DS required you to turn the game off if you wanted to do much of anything at all. But now the final thing. You see up in the top right corner, that's where the charge level is. I'm going to give you some stats because I did extensive battery tests for this thing. Note that Nintendo said that battery life would be different depending on what game you're in. So all of these stats are based on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because of what they said, every different game review that, I'm, that I do for Switch games, I'm likely going to include battery information there, depending on how different it really is. First, if you're in handheld mode, you've got brightness all the way up, and you've got Wi-Fi enabled. Legend of Zelda will take you 2 hours and 36 minutes to go from 100% to 15%. That is the point where the system tells you the battery is low and advises that you charge up the battery. Note that it will keep going for that remaining 15%, which means you can get close to 3 hours total with maximum brightness and Wi-Fi enabled, so maximum performance. Let's say maximum brightness in airplane mode, so you try to save a little bit of time. Maximum brightness in airplane mode, 2 15% is 3 hours. So you can probably get 3.5 hours all the way down to 0%. Now if we do low brightness, have brightness all the way down to low. With Wi-Fi on, it's 2 hours, two hours and 50 minutes, down to 15%. With low brightness in airplane mode on, super power saver, that is 3 hours and 12 minutes, which means you could potentially almost get 4 hours of playtime in that mode. Granted, on a sunny day, you're going to need that brightness, because, I mean, it, the screen is a little more resistant than, like, a PlayStation Vita screen, but you still need those brightness settings, especially if you're in a dark area in a game. Charging is a bit of a shocking stat. When I did these tests, I used the same power outlet, the same cord. When I plugged the system into the console and plug the console into the wall the charging speed was kind of slow in console mode you got one percent charge for every six minutes of gameplay now when you're in handheld mode it was only one minute and 15 seconds for one percent charge now don't get me wrong this is great for handheld gamers but why that's what i want to know why is the charge time so much slower in console mode. That and the battery life is really the other downer point about this system because handheld gamers are used to handhelds that have like five or six hours of battery life and this has got about half of that. Granted, it's also a console and it's considerably more powerful than any handheld out right now, but it's still something to think about. In conclusion, the Nintendo Switch is a really interesting device because it's a tablet, it's a console, and it's a handheld. And that's something I really like and it really does these different roles really well. Now, the left Joy-Con problem and the lower battery life are kind of downer points for now, but it's still a great system to check out whether you're a handheld gamer or a console gamer. Reviews to Go rates the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Head to my site at www.reviewstogo.com and expect Switch game reviews to start very soon, beginning with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild.